So members meeting this morning. Up with the lark. Here's Mika, and I'm there as Mika's guest, so which is why I'm meeting him. Now you should check out his channel. He does a lot of watch reviews, uh, repairs of watches, and car reviews as well. He does a lot of stuff, so it's a good channel, mixing old cars and old watches. Now there'll be a link in the description. He's here. <laughs> I'm very content with well done. Uh, my neighbour. Yeah, well, there you go. Well. There you go. Well, there's a big Italian um, Welsh connection, isn't there? <laughs> so, Mark, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Yep. So, there you go. We'll start filming for the day. Yeah. We'll <laughs> Anyway, cool. Right. Got your, uh... So did you know Paolo, Paolo Pinafrina died last week, didn't he? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's sad business. He was only 60. That's looking very elegant, isn't it? Yeah, I do like him. I've always been a fan. It's not pristine, but it, you know, it's a good driver. And it's Martin Buckley's fault. He switched me onto these. That's a lot of things. <laughs> it seemed to have similar taste in things. But everything I ever desired, he seemed to own. <laughs> this lovely E-Type. Now, it's a rare thing to see one in unrestored condition. And I particularly like the window sticker from the dealer. Moscovich, well, that's a bit uncommon, isn't it? It's obviously was in there at some point. If you don't know what a Moscovich is, Google it. Yeah, he likes a window sticker, doesn't he? But you know, we approve of that, particularly the Bugatti, Bugatti Owners Trust. G R R C, yeah. I know some people say that's down a hill and it's a shame, but I actually like to see things in original condition. Now this was one of the cars of the show for me. I love this old thing. Be a good tow vehicle. For that silver racing car, which you haven't seen yet, but I know it's coming up. And here it is. See these little bossing, the tridents on the steering wheel. This was car the show for us. The only thing is they haven't got the signs up saying what they are, so we don't know. Unless you really know well, your stuff. That's kind of the charm yeah, of yeah, it as yeah, well, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, normally you've got the sign up the top to see haven't you, what it is, so you're like, oh, they've, they've camouflaged the balancing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, I think it's a um, stop pulling off. It's a racing thing, yeah, so. Yeah, you have to sort of take them up, otherwise they fall off. So it's a 6cm Maserati, obviously. And, yeah. <laughs> Did I say car the show? It is car the show for me. I love it. Hundred and seventy five brake horsepower, supercharged.
I need a clean blower though on it, isn't it? Supercharger. I'll go back to the lorry for a bit. Did you um, sit here anywhere? Well, you're not completely, because we can just run through the others just to make sure I've got another bag you are. Here's Duncan Pitaway with the S76 Beast of Turin. I say 76, I can't remember actually. But it's the Beast of Turin. Now Duncan's got quite a collection of cars. Um, he was actually racing his Bugatti as well that weekend. But at the Revival sometimes he's in, he's in his um, uh, Plymouth. And um, also he's got a Cheetah. Which that's worth googling if you don't know what that is. That's a, that's effectively a sort of Corvette Stingray in a mad little body, crazy car. Yeah, forgive me for taking more footage of this, but I was um, drawn back to it. That's quite something. Pumping the fuel tank up. Marcus said it's a nice, it's a, it's a combination of loving the car but also being absolutely terrified of it. Yeah, <laughs> Well, you've got, um, there's no real safety in these things, is there? No, your head is what yeah, yeah, supports yeah. the exactly. weight of the car if you go upside exactly. down. Well, the thing is, the people in hope to be thrown away from the car when they have big pranks and these things, and hope that they land softly enough. To <laughs> not hurt you no, honestly, because you don't yeah, want to be in it when it lands on you because it crushes you. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's a real, yeah, yeah, it's beyond bravado racing things like this. Yeah, exactly. Unplugged the starter again, so I was hoping to get a bit of footage of that. You can tell that the way the looks of the face is like they're not. Yeah, on. something's not right. Something's not mm -hmm. right. Man. We've all been there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. Uh, well, I've been in this paddock on the morning of a sprint with um, oil hemorrhaging out the car, <laughs> trying to fix it. So this is sort of pre the holding area. They will bring them all up here, and then they go to an actual holding area before they go on the track. So you know, these lot were queuing up. Hence, I took some footage, but I didn't actually watch these guys. A pair of Bosch horns. <laughs> you feeling nostalgic here, Mark? Yes, I've got one of these. I approve. I hope I approve of the food too. Well, I've spent <laughs> I'm sure many I will. hours in these Mercedes vans. Oh, have you? oh my, well, there uh, you go. Oh, oh, well, there you are. Yeah. I like this one's got chrome door handles. I might have to change mine to chrome. You got the Astera edition. Well, exactly. Not the poverty model. Although I've got the extended one. It's about twice the length of this. Yeah. Which is hence why I used to have race um, motorcycles in it. I like these. <laughs> you just ride on your Lambretta, wouldn't it? Getting car 
Carter. That's one of the best intros and um, soundtracks. Hello, Touch of Evil is rather good as well for intro and soundtrack. Now, I remember seeing that when it came out. <laughs> Look at the price of it though. Some pretty things in here, aren't they? The grid who will be starting from the back, sharing that car with Ash Sutton, uh, previous race winner, of course. So, how quickly can they carve their way through the pack? Getting ready then for the Ken Miles Cup. And you can just hear the final sounds of these exhausts. So much grunt in these four Mustangs getting ready to take to the start of this race. Pit lane will open after the first 15 minutes out of this total 45 minute race. And then any time after that, we'll see cars coming in for our driver swap. Yellow flag coming down halfway through the grid, possibly for a potential staller. We'll see if that delays the start on pole will be in the number nine Davies Craig Davies sharing that car with Darren Turner in the red Mustang on the far left as you see it will start on pole alongside him Martin Whisker Jr then it'll be Mark Matheson good start though uh, from Davies and Matheson I like that Primrose one the French headlights through, trying to find every inch of track it is Davies who leads the way yeah, good, good. There's a bit of jostling and a bit of door Now that's actually prepared by CKL. And apparently they had to rebuild the gearbox on Saturday night in the paddock. They never ready. So, um, CKL is Chris Keith Lucas's um, business. So I used to know Chris through um, doing the Jaguar stuff with my mate Mick when we used to do a lot of work for him, for what was formerly Lynx. And of course, Chris's um, daughter is. Um, England's favourite weather girl, wasn't it? Sarah Keith Lucas. And his son does transport. So, you know, he can prep the car, drive the car, his son can move it, and she can make it rain. <laughs> so your opposition can't get the edge on you. But this was the 60th anniversary of the Mustang, um, all Mustang race. So a lot, lot of fun. Race and off in the Maybe I should have said favourite meteorologist. I didn't mean to be derogatory, saying weather girl. I don't expect she'd mind. Look at this thing. See, that's not the injection system, is it? So that'll be a Lucas injection, I suspect. Um, much like... Um, we talked about before in the previous videos. Hello, it's a different system, obviously, different different style of it. Yeah, another one on injection. Isn't it? Yeah, this is the joy of the members meeting. You can get up close to all this stuff. You know, you're not you're not made to stand behind the fence.
can see the little indicator of the unit in there. Well, that's off a mesh spit. I don't mean the plane, I mean the little bubble car. It's just a silly thing. But they're lovely little beehive indicators, aren't they? Overused word, awesome, but no, you'll forgive me for using it with this. You think they'd use them on the target floor, yeah? you know, on open roads, that go around. That's quite something, isn't it? A bit like the one Vic L Ford one, and um, it's a slightly later one. You know, Vic with um, Roberto Maggioli. I still don't know if I should say Maggioli or Maggioli. This guy's lost his silence, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Cool He's one for Fred in Bergamo. You know, you must watch that film if you haven't seen it about Fred making these at ISO restorations. They can build you one. I think the idea is to get a ladder and build it out of that so you've got proper ISO chassis plate and so on. Anyway. <laughs> Someone's got really hurting. <laughs> Cobra stuff. My mate in America, who I used to um, do the Jaguar stuff with now to build these. He's a, a proper talent, Nick. Edwardian stuff getting warming up. That's that Bianchi, oldest bicycle manufacturer. Continuous, you know, still it's the same people, you know, with them pistachio green bikes you see. Same firm, and they're still going. Oldest bicycle manufacturer. But the car side of it you know, has changed. So it went from Bianchi to Ultra Bianchi, which is like my little Arbath, and then they, they folded that and got them out and made it into Lancer and Fiat. And that's all gone. But the bike's still going. He reckons that's one of the oldest ones in existence of the cars. I, I don't know much about it, but it's quite cool. And you see, you see the wooden wheels. It's a bit like Turner's the hay wagon, isn't it? You have, to, you have to keep them wet or moist. You, know, you can't put it in a dehumidified garage because they go wobbly. And that's why in the hay wagon, the carts in the, in in the Ford. Not for the horses to have a drink, which is what people think. It's actually because they need to keep the, 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 the wheels moist. They are wagon wheels to expand them. And here's the shed racing car. And the 
that's uh, t uh, Tom Chapman who's was driving it. someone through. Who's that? That'll be Ivan Dutton and that's his car isn't it? So this is the shed racing team. I know some of you guys that watch this are actually you know watch his channel as well so a little treat for you. This is Grace, Duke of Richmond. This is his family seat, good good estate, isn't it? Now, I was going to go and ask him about that like a camera I borrowed and see if he could give me any tips because, of course, he was a professional photographer in his youth. Um, you know, quite acclaimed. And now his daughter is as well, apparently. But his son was racing in Capri later on in the day, with the close of the day that, that race he was in the uh, in Capri. The other thing, if I went and talked to the Duke of Richmond, you know, I don't know what the form is, you know, do I curtsy? What do you do? <laughs> How do you address him? <laughs> anyway, it's not really a problem I have. I, I wouldn't have said anything, for sure. So uh, quite stirring, aren't they? You see the open valve gear moving. You're fascinated with these little things, and then, you know, especially with these air engines, they stick in them. Of course, you know these air engines are, are quite significant and useful because they they huge capacities, but obviously fairly lightweight. That's why they're cast in aluminium and magnesiums and things like that. Whereas obviously all the car engines of that era would have been cast iron things very heavy so it makes good thing for a racing car there's quite a few of them turned out it's good yeah, I'm here. So I watch you go in. Well, well i think we'll, we'll make it i just want to see i just think the beast of is going to come back all oh, right okay yeah we'll get that Quite useful when they got the name on them. <laughs> you know what you're looking at. <laughs> there goes the beast. That is awesome thing, isn't it? Good stories about this. There's a lot of information on it, a lot of YouTube stuff. So Google it and have a look. And you know, some it's worth finding out more about it. And here's the Gordon Murray stuff. Uh, T55 and then the test mill for the T30 um, whose name I forget is it Trevor? <laughs> I'll look it up because <laughs> he's he's, uh, his latest video talks about why he's given them names um, and yeah I, yeah anyway you can look that up look at these things <laughs>
we go. <laughs> well, this is the thing, you had such a variety of things to watch at the, at the members meeting, you know, because you've got stuff that you don't get at the revival. So, yeah, between these and some of the more modern stuff, it was bonkers.
Yeah, it's lovely. Time to say goodbye to Mika because he had to leave early. Or oh, I stayed till they kicked me out. Say so thank you for the day. It's been wonderful, well, and we'll um, catch up. We will. And we'll uh, we'll put this on the uh, on the YouTube, can't we? <laughs> Brilliant. I'll um I'll film you driving out. Isn't that an elegant car? Right. <laughs> Lovely thing. Yep, there it is. That's the um, Primrose Mustang I was on about with the yellow headlights. Yeah, French emulating that film, isn't it? A man and a woman which is a great film, look that one up. Yeah, I like that. I like the subtlety of it. Quite like the early notchbacks. You know, it's uh, nice to see something that's not got stripes down it, or isn't it, Eleanor replica. No, I quite, I quite like that. And I'd have a ga on Galaxy Steel Wheels, because that was the period thing they used to do. So I wouldn't have them um, the American talk thrusts or whatever. So I had a quick look to see if Gordon was about. Because I wanted to ask him how he's getting on with that Fiat Dino of his. You know the one I did the gearbox on? See if he's got out there and enjoyed it again. So, uh, but he wasn't there. So I did think of asking Dario here uh, if he's ever driven it. But I thought better of it. <laughs> Because his brother works for um, 10 Tenth Racing, doesn't he? The um, Nick Mason's team driving them and things like the Birdcage, which you could look up as well. And Dario used to own Jim Clark's Lotus Cortina. And I'm not sure if he's still got it or not, but you can look him up. So Dario Fortuna, French. And this is towards the end of the, end of the day. A bit of Maserati action here. Yeah? And Chris Keith was out on track, I think in a C type in this one. And um, <laughs> of course, Nigel Webb, who's a very famous collector of, of Jaguar stuff, he was out there, you know, collects Mike Hawthorne cars. You know, he was out there. And I'm sort of winding down now, it's um, towards the end of the day, but the very last race of the day was all these lot, all the 70s stuff, like the sort of Jerry Marshall, in fact this might be the Jerry, I think I call it Jerry Marshall, I can't remember now, it used to be called Jerry Marshall race, and all this sort of 70s stuff, it's very cool. Anyway, this is moving towards the end of the film. So, coming up next will be the photos of it. And I packed a few people, so you might recognise some of them. And you might have been packed yourself if you were in the crowd, so have a look, have a see. Because we know where that term comes from, paparazzi. It's from Paparazzo, isn't it? The character in um, La Dolce Vita, the beautiful life which is also a particularly good film. 
good film, that's understanding it. It's one of my favourite films. <laughs> but he's a character in that, and that's where the name came from. Um, but that was back when the stars would like to be photographed, and you know, it was a, it was a sort of um, bit more of a two way street. You know, now they're just pests. And it has nasty connotations, doesn't it? That word.